coming up on something sinister. I turn. I turn. Turn. I turn into a tree. Many of the films we're about to talk about are known and beloved by many people around this time of year, but the name Rankin Bass is only known to a select few. Rankin Bass is a production company founded by Arthur Rankin and Jules Bass. They are responsible for Christmas specials like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town, among many others. Despite the intent placed during the making of these films, there are some imagery and themes that have stuck with me until my adult years. Here are five questionable moments in Rankin Bass history. Keep in mind, we are watching these through the lens of a child. Santa Claus is Coming to Town is perhaps the most well-known Rankin Bass Christmas special. It tells the story of an orphaned Kris Kringle and how he grows up and becomes the man in red and white that we know today. While one of the characters in the film, the cold-hearted Winter Warlock, gave me nightmares as a kid, perhaps a more interesting topic lies within a deleted scene from the movie. The song, Be Prepared to Pay, showcases the children of Sombertown being asked to sit on Kringle's lap and give him a kiss in exchange for a toy. While perhaps made with innocent intent, some viewers found the song and imagery to be perverted, and in return, the song was cut from most broadcasts of the movie on television. One of the more obscure Rankin Bass specials on this list, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus is yet another origin story for old Kris Kringle. The film opens with what appears to be a council meeting in the forest. The members, known as the Immortals, are discussing whether or not to give Santa Claus the gift of immortality. To prove that he is deserving, council member Great Ak takes us back to the beginning. It's here where we learn Claus was raised by animals in the forest and a wood nymph named Nasil. Throughout his life, the good-natured boy makes toys and learns the value of human kindness. The villains of the movie, a group known as the Aguas, are unique to say the least. The Aguas, whose sole purpose is to make children do bad things, are not too happy about Claus encouraging children to be on their best behavior. Who dares call on us? and has the power to force us into visibility. It is I, Master Woodsman of the world. We owe no allegiance to you, nor to any immortal. <laughs> that is true. Yet you have ventured to interfere with the actions of Claus, who dwells in Laughing Valley and is under my protection. <laughs> you rule only the forest of Bursey. The valley is ours. We will do as we please with this claws. The creatures are designed to look monstrous, their attire decked with spikes to match their horns and sharp teeth. Some may question Rankin Bass for the design choices made. While I have found no definitive answer, 
their involvement at the time with the TV show Thundercats may have had some inspiration for their design choices. Doubling as a holiday special for both Christmas and St. Patrick's Day, the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold is one of the most bizarre specials on this list. The movie follows protagonist Dinty Doyle as he unknowingly digs up a cursed pine tree and releases the evil old Mag the Hag. Mag is a banshee, and as she puts it, the physical embodiment of tears. Her motivation is to find the leprechaun's gold, or she will revert back to tears and wash away forever. With a topic like leprechauns, good luck is sure to be a reoccurring theme. For Mag, she is said to bring bad luck wherever she goes. Not only does she have the ability to cause catastrophes, but she can also shapeshift to whatever she pleases. The Leprechaun's Christmas Gold was a financial flop in comparison to its previous specials. Around the time of its release, creator Arthur Rankin planned to bury special prizes all across the United States for the young audiences to find. However, the plans were soon put to rest after safety concerns were brought up. Another one of the most beloved Rankin-Bass films, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, was released in 1964. The film, much like Santa Claus is Coming to Town, is an origin story for one of the most iconic Christmas characters, Rudolph. If you've heard the Rudolph song, much of the lyrics discuss the basic plot of the film. Rudolph is a reindeer born with a glowing red nose, and because of this, he is ostracized by the other reindeer who make fun of him and don't allow him to participate in the reindeer games. While the story has a happy ending, the Rankin-Bass adaptation of the story features one particular character that scared many children upon its first viewing. <laughs> The abominable snowman of the north, or Bumble, serves as the main antagonist of the story. His sporadic movements and terrifying roar was enough to cement him into my memory for good. Before we get to the final video, please consider sharing this video and subscribing. If you'd like to support me, you can buy my movie Spine Chiller on Blu-ray or VHS by visiting the link below. Shirts are also available for the channel. Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July was released in 1979 and showcased one of the first major character crossovers in the Rankin-Bass universe. For those who don't know, the movie relies heavily on the entity known as Lady Borealis. Not only does she help lead Kris Kringle and his group of elves to the North Pole, he also gives Rudolph his shiny nose under the condition that he only ever uses it for good. What we haven't mentioned yet, and the most terrifying component to this Christmas special, is the antagonist of the film known as Winterbolt. And this terrible tyrant's powers came from a scepter of solid ice. Winterbolt's ominously lit cave full of ice and dragons was enough to scar me as a child. Not only is he terrifying in appearance, but his actions go beyond words. Not only does he coax Rudolph to use his nose for evil, but he also traps Frosty and his family so that they melt. On top of all this, and possibly the most unsettling part of the movie, revolves around the climax 
which shows Winterbolt's grim demise. No! No! My, my powers are gone! When the scepter dies, I go too! I turn, I turn, turn! I turn into a tree. The image of him slowly turning into a tree leaves absolutely nothing to the imagination. It is an image I will never forget. 